This video includes a paid sponsorship from Span, but more on that later. Tesla recently filed a new patent application for what they have titled Ultra Hard Cold Work Steel Alloy, which for the first time most likely gives us an inside look into the new custom alloy that Tesla has developed for the Cybertruck, which should officially go into production later on this year. So let's dive into the new details revealed by this patent application and talk about how this new stainless steel alloy will make the Tesla Cybertruck extremely tough. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. As we begin, I want to say a special thank you and give a special shout out to Halter Ferguson Financial, who recently became an Ultimate Level Patreon supporter. Thank you so much for your support. It makes a big difference. And also thank you to the rest of you who also support me on Patreon. When the Cybertruck was revealed back in November of 2019, Tesla talked about the 300 series cold rolled stainless steel that would make up the vehicle's exterior and exoskeleton. However, instead of just using an off the shelf uh, 300 series stainless steel, in true Tesla fashion, they decided to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, and create their own unique alloy to make the absolute best product for their exact application, of course. In our application here, we're talking about the Tesla Cybertruck. Now you may be aware of this already, but Tesla actually has a dedicated metallurgy team, a team who actually works on designing new metals for exact applications that Tesla needs. For instance, this team developed the aluminum alloy that makes the Model Y underbody castings possible. And obviously this new stainless steel alloy that will make the Cybertruck super strong and durable. Now, when it comes to some of the reasons why Tesla didn't just use an off the shelf existing 300 series stainless steel alloy, um, I believe it comes down to the fact that the Cybertruck needs to be many things. The stainless steel needs to be hard enough to resist damage. It needs to be corrosion resistant, even in salty conditions. It also needs to be bendable and cost effective. Apparently the perfect alloy with all these characteristics was not on the market, so Tesla designed their own. For example, one of the most common grades of stainless steel, 304 stainless steel, this article mentions, quote, its one weakness is saline. So grade 304 can pit or crevice when used near salt water. Obviously this would make 304 stainless steel not ideal for the Cybertruck, not only for environments near the ocean, but also um, in winter environments where they salt the roads, um, that would corrode the stainless steel. So they really can't use a 304 grade stainless steel. Beyond 300 series, there are 400 series stainless steels, but apparently as this Klockner Metals article points out, these 400 series stainless steels are quote, more easily corroded than 300 series grade. Now, of course, there are a number of other 300 series stainless steel alloys, and I don't have the time to dive into each one of those specific alloys and the characteristics, but nonetheless, it's obvious that none of these off the shelf products uh, currently meet Tesla's needs. Now, I wanna dive into the details uh, revealed in this patent application, but before I do that, I want to introduce the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to Span for sponsoring this video. If you are thinking about installing a solar and a battery backup system, or if you currently have such a system, you definitely need to check out Span. Unlike traditional electrical panels, the SPAN Smart Panel allows you to monitor and track your energy usage and solar generation remotely through an easy to use iOS or Android app. Also, when combined with a battery backup system like a Tesla Powerwall, it can help you extend your battery backup time by somewhere around 40% on average. Find out more and get a quote at span.io or click the link in the video description. And if you do fill out that form to get a quote, make sure that you put cleaner watt in the comments section so Span knows that I sent you. Okay, moving to this new patent application that Tesla recently filed. Tesla describes their new steel alloy in the following way. The present invention relates to steel alloys. More specifically, the present invention relates to steel alloys with improved hardness and corrosion resistance for high performance applications, including automobile parts. Tesla goes on to describe the fact that there are a number of other 300 series stainless steels on the market. And beyond the 300 series, there are a number of other series of stainless steels on the market. However, when it comes to the 400 series Martinistic stainless steels, all of the various steps that are needed to create these alloys apparently make these Martinistic alloys very expensive and they require very expensive equipment. And apparently these treatments, quote, may cause warpage of the target product depending on product form. So obviously the existing alloys, they're not ideal for their particular requirements. And uh, Tesla is developing their own. Now when it comes to the hardness and the tensile strength, 
of the alloys that they're developing. This patent application mentions a steel alloy that has a hardness at least about 400 HV. Beyond that, Tesla also mentions, quote, in some embodiments, the hardness is about 420 HV to about 500 HV. Now, when it comes to the meaning of these numbers and the HV after the numbers, that refers to the Vickers hardness test, which is one of the tests that are currently used to determine the hardness of metals. As you can see here, when you compare a hardness of 400 to 500 for Tesla's alloys to either 301, 304, 316, or 317 stainless steel, you can see that Tesla's new alloy is quite a bit harder. When it comes to tensile strength, Tesla mentions, quote, in some embodiments, the composition has a yield strength of about 1100 MPa. When it comes to how this tensile strength compares to, say, like a 304 stainless steel, according to the AZO Materials website, depending on its form, the tensile strength of 304 stainless steel is apparently somewhere around 500 to around 750 MPa. On the flip side, a 301 stainless steel, depending on how it's tempered, apparently has a tensile strength between 758 to 1276 MPa. But of course, the trick is to balance this hardness with bendability for, say, an application like the Cybertruck. As Elon Musk said on Twitter back in November of 2019, reason Cybertruck is so planar is that you can't stamp ultra hard 30X steel because it breaks the stamping press. Even bending it requires deep score on inside of bend, which is how the prototype was made. When it comes to the bendability or the ductility of Tesla's new steel alloys, this patent application mentions, in some embodiments, the composition has a ductility of at least about 60 degree bend angle at 1.8 millimeter thickness. In order to provide clarification, I googled the term ductility, and according to Science Direct, quote, ductility is the ability of a material to be drawn or plastically deformed without fracture. When it comes to how this ductility of Tesla's super hard alloy compares to say like a 301 alloy, this patent application specifically gives the example, quote, the longitudinal bend angle of alloy one, referring to their alloy, is about 84 degrees. The transverse bend angle of alloy one is about 122 degrees. While the longitudinal bend angle for type 301 alloy is about 64 degrees, and the transverse bend angle for type 301 alloy is about 109 degrees. So Tesla's alloy is able to be bent at a greater angle without breaking, which of course makes it great for an application like say the Cybertruck, which of course requires a lot of bending of the steel alloy. Now beyond the hardness, the tensile strength, and the bendability of Tesla's stainless steel alloys, let's now actually move into details that Tesla reveals about the actual elements that go into these alloys. At a basic level, Tesla describes one embodiment including 15 to 18% by weight of chromium, 4 to 8% by weight of nickel, 1.5 to 6% by weight of manganese, and the rest iron. However, beyond just those four basic elements, Tesla also mentions that in some embodiments, the composition further includes at most about 0.25% by weight of nitrogen, 2% by weight of molybdenum, 0.03% by weight of carbon, 0.75% by weight of silicon, 0.045% by weight of phosphorus, and 0.03% by weight of sulfur. Then Tesla goes on to talk about an alloy that includes all 10 of these elements and gives the basic percentages for that. Now, I'm not going to pretend to be a stainless steel expert. However, I did do some research and there are a few quick things that I want to point out about the elements that Tesla talks about, including in their stainless steel alloys. First of all, notice the very small amount of carbon that makes up this alloy. Based on this very low amount of 0.03% by weight of carbon, that would make these new Tesla stainless steel alloys equivalent to an L-series stainless steel. Because as this article on SPPUSA.com states, the letter L after a stainless steel type indicates low carbon, as in 304L, the carbon is kept to 0.03% or under to avoid carbide precipitation. When it comes to the reasons why carbide precipitation would need to be avoided, Apparently at high temperatures, carbon precipitates out, deprives the steel of chromium, and promotes corrosion. So that's obviously not something you want with a Tesla Cybertruck. When it comes to the nitrogen that Tesla mentions being used in their alloys, I didn't see nitrogen listed in any of the common 300 series alloys, 
but I did find it in a 400 series stainless steel alloy. When it comes to chromium, chromium is a necessary element for stainless steel, so it's completely common. And as this article, once again from SPPUSA.com points out, you apparently need a minimum of 12% chromium to make a stainless steel resistant to corrosion and oxidation. When it comes to the nickel percentage of four to 8% by weight, that nickel content is apparently very similar to a 301 series stainless steel. And when it comes to the manganese percentage there of 1.5 to 6% by weight, typical 300 stainless steels apparently have a manganese content of around 2%. When it comes to the silicon content of 0.75% by weight, that percentage of silicon is comparable to a 317 stainless steel. And when it comes to the molybdenum content of 0.5% five to 2% by weight. That falls somewhere around a 321, 347, 316, or 316 L series stainless steel. When it comes to the very small amount of phosphorus Tesla uses in their alloys, that 0.045% number is apparently used in quite a few 300 series stainless steels. When it comes to that sulfur content of 0.03% by weight, that is also apparently a very common percentage of sulfur in 300 series stainless steels. Then of course the rest of the formula includes iron. Now beyond that, Tesla goes on in this patent application to describe another embodiment where an alloy may include five additional new elements. Those elements include copper, cobalt, aluminum, titanium, and boron. Interestingly enough, when it comes to the copper, aluminum, and titanium, according to this article on the Clinton Aluminum website, precipitation hardening stainless steel contains aluminum, copper, and titanium as alloying agents. When it comes to the cobalt amount of 0.8% by weight, according to the Piping Mart blog, adding cobalt to stainless steel can increase the metal's resistance to corrosion, and quote, additionally, cobalt-containing stainless steels are less likely to suffer from pitting corrosion. Also, this article mentions, quote, another benefit of cobalt in stainless steels that it increases the strength of the metal. And lastly, when it comes to the very small amount of boron, according to this search from worldwidescience.org, which lists some research here from International Nuclear Information System, according to their research here, quote, from test measurements obtained so far, general trends indicate that tensile properties, yield strength and ultimate strength, increase with boron content. Now when it comes to some of the reasons why Tesla would have a number of these different alloys and talk about in one embodiment this and one embodiment that, I believe it comes down to the fact that they may have slightly different alloys for different parts of the truck. For instance, maybe the exoskeleton contains one type of alloy and then the body panels themselves include another type of alloy. That would make a lot of sense depending on how you're going to use that alloy, at what angle it needs to be bent, uh, if it needs to be more corrosion resistant than others. And I believe that could be a potential reason why we have several different alloys described in this patent application. At the end of the day, these new alloys or some version similar to them will make the Tesla Cybertruck very scratch, dent, and corrosion resistant, and will make the Tesla Cybertruck exterior much stronger than traditional trucks on the market right now. Um, and they'll make great work trucks. Of course, a lot of people are going to use the Cybertruck in recreational ways as well. And it'd be nice to be able to use your vehicle that way and not have to worry about getting scratches in the paint Etc. The Cybertruck is an amazing vehicle and I can't wait to see these on the road. And the stainless steel exterior is one huge benefit because of durability for this truck. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. And also if you're an expert in metals and you know a lot about stainless steels, I'd love to hear from you and to hear from insight from you. If you could email me, my email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt. Dot com. Again, John, J-O-N at cleanerwatt.com. I'd love to hear from you and hear insights if you have good information and insight on this patent application and specifically the stainless steel alloys that Tesla is developing. And once again, I'd like to thank Span for sponsoring this video. And also thank you to those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support makes a big difference. If you'd like to find out more about the CleanerWatt Patreon community and how you can support my work, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.